Good morning, Year 5, and welcome to our fifth and final reading lesson of the week. I must say that over the course of the week, I've been so impressed with the effort that I've seen from all of you to engage meaningfully with our home learning, and I've been extremely impressed with the work that I have seen on Seesaw. So well done, and make sure that you keep it up. In today's lesson, we're going to be uh, reading a non-fiction text which has relevance for the chapter of The Last Wild, which we read this week. And our learning objective for today is to fluently read an unfamiliar text. We're going to focus on reading the text fluently. And then at the beginning of next week, we're going to be focus on the comprehension element of this new text. We are going to, first of all, look at some of the vocabulary that will appear within the text and we're going to rehearse that vocabulary using hear, see, say, so that when we encounter the vocabulary in the text, we're able to decode it accurately and automatically. So, my turn. Convicted. Convicted. Guilty. Guilty. Physical. Physical. Facilities. Facilities. Specific. Specific. Enforcement. Enforcement. Incarcerated. Incarcerated. Solitary. Solitary. Confinement. Confinement. Rehabilitation. Rehabilitation. Deterrence. Deterrence. Incapacitation. Incapacitation. Retribution. Retribution. Alcatraz. Alcatraz. San Francisco. San Francisco. Notorious. Notorious. Frigid. Frigid. Dissuade. Dissuade. Elaborately. Elaborately. Improvised. Improvised. Speculation. Speculation. Now, there is a raft of complex vocabulary there that we have just explored. If you would find it helpful to go back and rehearse any of those words again using hear, see, say, you can pause the video and go back and try again so that you're ready to rehearse these words using speed words. Now, what I would like you to do when I say go, you have these speed words uh, grid in front of you in your work pack. It's also there for you on Seesaw and of course on the screen. I would like you to rehearse reading those words quickly and accurately. And you're going to do that twice. If you do have a stopwatch available uh, or a timer available, you can record your time and see if you can improve your time on the second attempt. When you've attempted that twice, you can press play to continue with our lesson. Go. OK, Year 5, so if you can please have in front of you the prisons text from your work pack or on Seesaw so that you're ready to begin. First thing I'd like us to consider is what text type do you think this is and why? If you said that this is a non-fiction text, well done, you're absolutely right. It is a non-fiction text because it contains information about a given topic. And in this case, we can be slightly more specific. It's a non-chronological report because it contains information that is structured in a way that is not chronological. It is not in time order. What features do you notice? Think about the structural features and the way that the text is organised. Well done. I'm sure some of you will have pointed out the fact that there are subheadings. Can you say one of the subheadings out loud? 
Well done. What is a prison is a subheading. Uh, what is the purpose of prisons is another example of a subheading. And these are used to structure the text and to let the uh, reader know what will be covered within each paragraph. It also helps the reader to quickly access and retrieve information having read it or, read, or if they're just using it for reference purposes. What I'd like you to do now, Year 5, is to practice reading the text aloud fluently. So think about the speed words that you've already rehearsed. When you encounter those in the text, your aim is to read them accurately because you should recognise them now having already practised them. So when I say go, what I would like you to do is to pause the video and to read this first paragraph aloud, what is a prison. Once you've done it, click play again to hear me reading it. Go. Well done, Year 5. Lovely reading. My turn. Prisons. What is a prison? A prison, also referred to as a jail, is a place where people are forced to live if their freedom has been taken away. The main use of prisons is as a punishment for breaking the law. Those who break the law and are convicted, found guilty, in court can receive a prison sentence, which is an order to spend a set amount of time in prison. Prisons are usually run by the government. Let's look at the next paragraph. Again, Year 5, you're going to practice decoding this paragraph first before you hear me reading it. So when I say go, pause the video, practice reading the paragraph aloud, and then when you've done that, press play to hear me read it. Go. Lovely reading again, Year 5. Well done. Remember to track whilst you listen to me read the text. Prison buildings and facilities. Prisons usually contain physical barriers to contain the prisoners. For example, walls and gates. There are usually many locked gates inside prisons to control the inmates. Inmates sleep in small locked rooms called cells. Cells usually have basic facilities including a bed, toilet and sink. Inmates are generally allowed to leave their cells during the day for specific purposes, including to exercise in the yard. Some inmates work in the prison during the day either in a factory, producing goods, or carrying out cleaning and cooking duties within the prison. Law enforcement officers supervise the prisoners. The manager of a prison is known as a warden or governor. Let's continue. Again, Year 5, it's your turn first. So when you're ready, press pause and read this paragraph aloud. Once you've done that, press play to hear me reading it aloud. Go. Well done, Year 5. My turn. The level of security a prison has depends on the type of prison. Maximum security prisons are for criminals who have committed the most serious crimes. Also, criminals who are deemed to be a flight risk are incarcerated here under strict conditions. Inmates who are considered to be a risk to either themselves or others are sometimes kept in solitary confinement where they are regularly monitored by prison staff. OK, I think you know the drill by now, Year 5, so when you're ready, press pause, read this paragraph aloud to practice your decoding. Once you've done it, press play to listen to me reading. Go. Excellent reading, Year 5. Well done. My turn. What is the purpose of prisons? There are four main ideas about what prisons should be used for. Rehabilitation. Prisons should be places that turn the prisoners into good people. Deterrence. People should be scared by the thought of going to prison, so they will not want to commit crimes. Incapacitation. Locking criminals up stops them from committing more crimes. Retribution. By forcing them to spend time in prison, society is taking revenge against people who break the law. If having heard me read that paragraph, you'd like to practice your decoding again, press pause to practice and then press play when you're ready to continue. OK, let's read the final paragraph. I'd like you to practice decoding it first, so pause the video and press play once you've had a practice. Go. Fantastic. My turn. Famous prisons in history. Alcatraz in San Francisco, USA, was one of the most notorious prisons in history. The prison was situated 
on an island in San Francisco Bay. Surrounded by frigid waters, it made escape virtually impossible. This did not dissuade people from attempting the risky escape. In 1962, three prisoners escaped from their cells in an elaborately planned attempt, including dummies which were left behind in their cells to fool the prison guards, improvised tools and a raft. The three men have never been seen since, prompting widespread speculation as to whether they survived the crossing of the bay. OK, Year 5. Great work so far. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to model reading the text through in its entirety. And this time, now that we've had a go at practicing our decoding to make sure that it's accurate and that we're recognising words uh, automatically, we're now going to focus on expression and punctuation. I'm going to model it to you first to show you what that sounds like. Then, once I've modelled it, I'm going to break it down and explain the thinking that has gone on in my head, which has informed the way that I've read it. Then it's going to be your turn to have a go at reading the text in its entirety, using your best fluency, uh, your expression, rate, accuracy and punctuation. And your task for today will be to record that reading on Seesaw for me to listen to. So here we go. It's my turn first. I'd like you to follow along, tracking with either your finger or a pencil or pen. Prisons. What is a prison? A prison, also referred to as a jail, is a place where people are forced to live if their freedom has been taken away. The main use of prisons is as a punishment for breaking the law. Those who break the law and are convicted, found guilty, in court, can receive a prison sentence which is in order to set, spend a set amount of time in prison. Prisons are usually run by the government. Prison buildings and facilities. Prisons usually contain physical barriers to contain the prisoners, for example, walls and gates. There are usually many locked gates inside prisons to control the inmates. Inmates sleep in small locked rooms called cells. Cells usually have basic facilities, including a bed, toilet and sink. Inmates are generally allowed to leave their cells during the day for specific purposes, including to exercise in the yard. Some inmates work in the prison during the day, either in a factory producing goods or carrying out cleaning and cooking duties within the prison. Law enforcement officers supervise the prisoners. The manager of a prison is known as a warden or governor. The level of security a prison has depends on the type of prison. Maximum security prisons are for criminals who have committed the most serious crimes. Also, criminals who are deemed to be a flight risk are incarcerated here under strict conditions. Inmates who are considered to be a risk to either themselves or others are sometimes kept in solitary confinement, where they are regularly monitored by prison staff. What is the purpose of prisons? There are four main ideas about what prisons should be used for. Rehabilitation. Prisons should be places that turn the prisoners into good people. Deterrence. People should be scared by the thought of going to prison, so they will not want to commit crimes. Incapacitation. Locking criminals up stops them from committing more crimes. Retribution. By forcing them to spend time in prison, society is taking revenge against people who break the law. Famous prisons in history. Alcatraz in San Francisco was one of the most notorious prisons in history. The prison was situated on an island in the San Francisco Bay. Surrounded by frigid waters, it made escape virtually impossible. This did not dissuade people from attempting the risky escape. In 1962, three prisoners escaped, their cells, escaped from their cells in an elaborately planned attempt, including dummies which were left behind in their cells to fool the prison guards, improvised tools and a raft. The three men have never been seen since, prompting widespread speculation as to whether they survived the crossing of the bay. So, now you've heard a model of what a fluent reading of the text sounds like, I'm going to break it down to you and explain my thought process. 
The first element of my fluent reading that I want to consider is punctuation. Now, I can see that the subheading, what is a prison, is a question. So I'm going to highlight that question because I will need to read that in a different manner. Now, when I read a question, the tone of my voice increases. Sorry, the pitch, should I, should I say, the pitch of my voice increases. That means it starts off low and towards the end of the sentence, it increases. A little bit like this. What is a prison? Did you see how my voice went up towards the end of the sentence? That's because it's a question. My turn. What is a prison? Your turn. Well done. I'd like you to read through the rest of the text, or scan the rest of the text, should I say, and see if you can identify anywhere else where questions appear within the text and underline those or highlight those so that you know when you read it, the pitch of your voice will increase towards the end of the question. Go. Well done, Year 5. Now that you've done that, the next element of punctuation I want to look out for is where brackets have been used to indicate parenthesis. Remember back to our writing unit, our, our writing lesson last term, what do we mean by parenthesis? If you said that parenthesis means additional information that is added to a sentence, well done. Now brackets are often used to indicate parenthesis, and if we look at the first sentence I can see here, also referred to as a jail, is additional information within this sentence and it is marked by brackets. It's additional information because it's giving another term that is used to refer to a prison. A prison, also referred to as a jail. Now when I read that parenthesis, I'm going to make sure that I pause at the beginning and end of the parenthesis. In other words, where the brackets appear, I'm going to pause. This is what it might sound like. A prison, also referred to as a jail, is a place... Did you see how I paused where the brackets were and that set that information apart from the rest of the sentence? I'm going to show you one more time and then I want you to have a go. A prison, also referred to as a jail, is a place where people are forced to live. Your turn. Well done, Year 5. Great. Now we've had a chance to consider punctuation, I'm going to look at uh, what happens to the pitch of my voice as I'm reading these sentences. Now, because it's a non-fiction text, it contains lots of statements. Remember, a statement is a sentence that gives us information. Now, when I'm reading a statement, it's the opposite of a question. So if, when I read a question, the pitch of my voice increases at the end of the sentence, what will happen when I read a statement? Well done, you're absolutely right. The pitch of my voice will decrease when I read a statement. I'm going to show you what that sounds like, and then you're going to have a go. A prison, also referred to as a jail, is a place where people are forced to live if their freedom has been taken away. Did you notice how the pitch of my voice went down at the end of the sentence? I'll do it one more time, then it's your go. A prison, also referred to as a jail, is a place where people are forced to live if their freedom has been taken away. Your turn. Excellent. Well done, Year 5. And that same rule applies for all of the statements of fact, or the statements that I will read within this uh, text. So even the next sentence. The main use of prisons is as a punishment for breaking the law. Again, my pitch came down. Now we've talked about pitch, I want to consider emphasis. Which words am I going to emphasise within the text and why? To do that, we're going to look at the next paragraph. So to read fluently, I've really got to consider which words I'm going to emphasise. I can emphasise words by giving them an accent, much as I did just there. Uh, and that might mean I'm increasing the volume for that particular word, 
or that I'm really uh, deliberately pronouncing each uh, sound that the word makes. So for example, maximum. I mm, gave a lot of power to the M at the beginning of the word and I increased my volume. When I'm deciding which words to emphasise and which words to, to, to not emphasise, I will consider the meaning of the sentence and which words are the most important words within that sentence to convey the meaning. So, if I look at the second sentence, I can see that the adjective maximum is really important because it's telling us about the type of prison. And I also think serious is important because it emphasises the fact that the criminals have committed the most serious crimes. So I'm going to emphasise the words maximum and serious within that sentence. This is what it might sound like. Maximum security prisons are for criminals who have committed the most serious crimes. Listen again and listen to the words that I deliberately emphasise by increasing the volume and accenting them. Maximum security prisons are for criminals who have committed the most serious crimes. Your turn. Have a go at reading that sentence, accenting those words. Go. Great job, Year 5. What I would like you to do now is to read through the remainder of the text and highlight any words that you know you're going to emphasise because they give meaning to the text. Bear in mind that it's often adjectives uh, and verbs which give us the most important meaning within sentences. Not always, but often. Have a go, and then once you've done that, press play again to continue with the lesson. Go. Great job, Year 5. You are now ready for your independent application. For your independent application, what I would like you to do is I would like you to record yourself on Seesaw reading the text in its entirety, so reading the whole text. And when you're doing that, I'm going to be listening for fluency. So are you reading the words accurately? Are you reading at a good rate? Are you using expression? And are you reading the punctuation correctly? I'm really looking forward to hearing your reading. Good luck, Year 5.